What makes muscle grow is a question that has puzzled gym goers for years. Many believe that muscle growth is all about lifting heavy weights and pushing your body to its limit, but the science behind it is much more complex. Welcome back to this video on the science behind muscle growth. The desire to look and feel better is typically what motivates many people to join a gym or start working out. It is true that muscle building plays a key role in transforming your physique, but there are a lot of other health benefits to increase your lean muscle mass. Watch till the end of this video and I will explore the science behind muscle growth and why building muscle is so important for your overall health. In the next video, I will explain to you how to achieve muscle growth or muscle hypertrophy. If you like this video and find this useful, please click the like button. Please leave your comments below and share this video. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future weekly video release. Please also subscribe to this channel. This is completely free of charge, but will help the channel to grow. Thank you. First, we need to recognize that building muscle provides far more benefits than just making you look better and feel stronger. In fact, muscle isn't just for show. It is important for our overall health, longevity, and metabolism. It is therefore a healthy goal for all adults to maintain and build muscle mass, not only those trying to emphasize their physique. And this is because adults start to lose muscle mass at the age of 30, and research suggests that physically inactive people lose 3-5% to of the lean muscle mass every 10 years. To prevent this loss, muscle need to be stressed through regular strength training. Please take a look at my recent video on muscle loss and sarcopenia. Other benefits of strength training include manage weight by increasing lean muscle mass, which means burn more calories, increase bone density and promote strong bones, protect joints from injury and decrease the risk of falls as you age, reduce symptoms of some chronic conditions such as heart disease, depression and diabetes. And in order to build muscles effectively, we need to understand the science behind it. When you are trying to build muscle, there are three important scientific concepts to keep in mind. First, mechanical tension, second, muscle damage, and third, metabolic stress. Let's take a look at each one individually. First, mechanical tension. This may be the most critical factor for muscle growth. For your muscles to experience mechanical tension, you have to perform resistance training of some kind. For example, performing a bicep curl with a dumbbell or barbell causes tension in the bicep muscles. Don't be afraid to push yourself because by using a weight that feels challenging, you will set yourself up for optimal mechanical tension and thus muscle growth. This is the principle of progressive overload. Next, muscle damage. Strength training such as weight lifting causes trauma to your muscles. Cells in your muscle fibers repair the damage and subsequently the muscle fibers increase in size. This process makes the muscle bigger over time as the size of muscle fibers continue to increase. Resistance training also helps your body to release growth hormones naturally, which helps to turn the free amino acids into proteins that increase muscle size. The last factor for muscle growth is metabolic stress. During a strength workout, fatigue in muscles lead to a buildup of metabolites. These are the leftovers from the chemical reactions that happen when your muscles use energy, such as lactate and hydrogen ions. These metabolites cause the release of hormones and other byproducts that cause muscle to grow. Now let's dig deeper into the science of muscle growth by giving you an example. When you flex your biceps, you're contracting thousands of small muscle fibers. Each of those fibers is a muscle cell made of thousands more links called sarcomeres. When our brain sends a signal to move, the chain reaction that flexes your biceps starts here. And inside each sarcomere are even thinner contractile myofilaments called actin and myosin. And this is where the magic of muscle growth takes place. Muscle growth or skeletal muscle hypertrophy is the result of a complex process that adds more myosin filaments to each muscle fiber. This makes the engine of cell bigger and stronger over time. But building a bigger engine isn't easy and your muscle can't do it alone. It needs two things. First, parts, that is protein, and mechanic, MTOR, which stands for mammalian target of rapamycin. It is a complex protein that regulates when and how much your body starts to build muscles. So when you lift weights, you wake up the MTOR, that is mechanics, so he can go to work. This process is called muscle protein synthesis or MPS. So is it that simple that we just have to lift some weight, let the MTOR do his things and we explode with muscle? Unfortunately, MPS has an evil twin, that is muscle protein breakdown. 
that directly counteract it. When these two forces are balanced, we don't gain or lose muscle. If your protein balance is positive, the surplus can be directed by resistance training into muscle cells. But if you're in a negative or neutral protein balance, there is no fuel for the engine and no parts to make it bigger. So, to put on muscle, you will need to force your body into a net positive protein balance. Then, MPS gets the upper hand. But there's a little more to it than that. Your body is never purely anabolic or catabolic. And no matter what you do, you always have some muscle synthesis and breakdown happening at the same time. Even the things we think are good for muscle growth, like resistance training, can be both anabolic and catabolic. What matters is that the average of those come out positive, that is muscle gain, instead of neutral or negative. And just like counting macros, it is what you do on a daily, weekly and monthly basis that determines your success in the long run. The question is, how do you tip the balance of synthesis and breakdown in your favour? Well, the science can go deep, but all you really need to know are the basics. Train hard and get plenty of protein. When you lift weights, you're increasing muscle protein breakdown. But later, when you recover, the pendulum swings back to the other way and MTOR goes to work. Remember, lifting weights apply three types of stress to the muscle fibers that signal for them to grow. Mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage. Old school bodybuilders might say muscle damage is the key to growth, but science doesn't back this up. What we do know is that volume or tension is the biggest builder of muscle. Adding volume over time in the form of weights, reps or sets will allow you to keep making gains. And then there's the other half of the equation, protein. MTOR needs part to build the engine and those parts are the essential amino acids. Because your body can't synthesize these on its own, you need to get them from your diet. Some protein, like leucine, are especially important because they directly stimulate MPS. And the next question is, how much protein do you need? It is different for everyone, obviously, but 1.4 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day is a good place to start. Hitting this target will get you all the essential amino acids you need to build muscle. Then, resistance training, tell your body what to do with them. If you are getting most of your protein from high quality sources like meats, dairy and eggs, then you are probably getting plenty of the essentials you need to build muscles. But why is protein so important for muscle growth? Well, to understand why, you have to know the central role that protein plays in the body. Your body has plenty of places to store fat and carbs, but no real way to store protein, except in muscle mass. During medical emergencies, your body needs extra protein to survive and heal, and it gets its protein from muscle tissues. As I've mentioned at the beginning of this video, that building muscle is not just making you look better and feel stronger. There are numerous other benefits. Muscle is an important part of the whole body metabolism. Some of the energy we expend each day comes from movement or eating and digesting food but most of it comes from our body resting energy expenditure. And while there's not much we can do to change this, we can modify it by adding lean body mass. While it is a myth that muscle is highly metabolically active compared to other organs, muscle is the only organ you can increase to boost your metabolic rate. You can't add another lung or kidney, but you can put on plenty of muscle over time. Finally, gaining muscle, whether you're young or old, can fight two of the biggest problems with aging, muscle loss, that is sarcopenia, and bone loss, osteoporosis. The science of gaining muscle goes much deeper than anything we have touched on in this video, but the practice doesn't have to be complicated. Here are some quick takeaways. Stay in a positive protein balance by hitting your protein consistently. Get your protein from high quality sources like meat, eggs, dairy, and soya. Your body needs energy to grow, so it's helped to be in a calorie surplus. Make sleep a priority, both quantity and quality. Hit the weight consistently and train harder by adding volume in weight, reps and set over time. So you're all set. Arm yourself with science, cloak yourself in muscle and strike out into a stronger, healthier future. Until next week, take care. Thank you for watching until the end. If you like this video, please click the like button. Please leave your comments below and share this video. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future weekly video release. Please also subscribe to this channel. This is free of charge, but will help the channel to grow. 
If you're interested in improving your health and fitness or losing weight, if you suffer from or wish to prevent back pain, please take a look at my book, which is now available from Amazon Worldwide. Thank you.